we're going to have two things that change in this app. We're going to have a, a list of things of places to eat that's going to change. And then we're going to have if this app is going to be uh, an anonymous poll or a public poll. So those two things that are going to change, we need placeholders for. Uh, so we use variables for placeholders. So this first one is going to say, uh, we can just call this uh, lunch options. And we want to set this to be an empty list of things. So if we just go to list, we can get this empty list block. Great. And then next, we need another variable. And this is going to tell you if uh, something is anonymous or not. So I'm just going to write in anonymous, uh, anonymous one. And I'm just going to set this to be nothing for now. When this app opens, um, so when screen one opens, what do we want to do? We want to set this variable of lunch options, this list of things that's going to change. We want to set that to uh, be that local DB database that we just made. So we're going to go into variables and we're going to set lunch options to be uh, the local DB get column. And then what was the name of the column? Let's just quickly go back local DB. That was place. We have to also capitalize the P when we put this in. So I'm going to go into blocks. I'm going to get this text block and I'm just going to write in place. So when the screen uh, starts, I'm going to change that to starts. When the screen starts, we're going to set this variable of options. We're going to set this placeholder for all the options to be, we're going to say, hey, go to that column and set it. We're going to pick from that column. That's the place column. Next, uh, let's program the refresh button. Uh, to do this, uh, we're going to actually start with a function. So functions are really cool shortcuts. Um, you can program a function to do a whole bunch of things, and then rather than have to block out all of those things again and again, you just call the function once. So we're going to say to refresh. To refresh, um, what are we going to do? Uh, we want to set all of these different choices uh, to be a random item from this list. Uh, this list of different places. And every time we do a refresh, we want this to change. So I'm just going to get choice one, set uh, text two, and I'm just going to move my face for a second. I'm just going to copy and paste this a bunch of times. And I'm going to change this to say choice two, choice three, choice four, and choice five. Um, so what do we want to change these to? We want to get a, a random item from a list. And we want it to be a random item from this uh, variable, the Funkable Lunch Club or App Lunch Club. So I'm just going to get App Lunch Club, plug it in a bunch of times. So what is this saying? It's saying when we refresh, we want to set the text of each of these options to be something from this list of restaurants that we've created. So that's how you program that. Uh, and we want to do that every time the screen starts. And rather than just copy and paste all of these, we'll just get a refresh function and plug it in. Uh, we're going to do this one more time because when the refresh button is clicked, we want to do the same thing. So when the refresh button is clicked, we want to refresh. And I can show you what that looks like so far. So I'm going to just click live test. Um, so here is the option. Uh, we have all of our options listed. When I click refresh, it's going to randomly change all of those food options to be different things. Uh, so that is what we've programmed so far. Now we need to program the share button. Uh, the share button is going to send things to Slack. Uh, so we want to say when the, let's see, what is that button called? Give it a name, send to Slack button. When the send to Slack button is clicked, we want to share. So we'll go to share, where is that? Share one. And we want to uh, send a message. So I'm just going to copy and paste that over here. Great. And what is that message? So if you know Slack, uh, you know that there are very specific formats you have to use to create a poll. So I'm just going to recreate that format for Slack. So I'm going to go into text and I'm going to get this join block. 
I'm going to get rid of these. And we're going to need a whole bunch of openings for all of these different options. So I'm just going to start dragging in different things to different things to send to Slack. Okay, that should be enough. Great. So when you create a poll on Slack, you have to use this really specific format, which is uh, slash poll, and then space quote, and then you have to name the poll. So I'll just call this lunch options. And uh, then you need to list all of the different lunch options that um, are from this list. Uh, the way you do that is you have to use quotes. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and delete it. And now we have this blank text. I'm just going to copy and paste a bunch of them. We can use them for later. This first one, uh, you need a quote before and after each option. So I'm just going to put a quote. And then I'm going to go get the text from choice one. And then we need to put a quote after. And we're going to need another one for the next option. So again, this looks a little confusing. If you're familiar with Slack and you're familiar with making polls, you're like, I know exactly what this is. For those of you who don't have Slack, uh, this is just basically a way to format your different choices. They need to be in quotes. So I'm just going to copy and paste this one, and I'm going to set, let's see. I'm going to get one of these blank texts, and um, oops, sorry, no, I'm going to go to the anonymous label, and we're just going to say from anonymous label, get text. Plug that in. All right, and now we can delete these. So uh, again, this was very specific to how formatting is on Slack. Um, doesn't have to, to do this if you're not sending your thing to Slack. Maybe you're just sending it to uh, a text message or an email, and then you wouldn't have to put in all of these quotes. You can just put in a list of lunch choices. Great. So the next thing that we have to do is program the switch, which will tell you if uh, this is going to be anonymous or not. Uh, so the way to do this is to say uh, if... And then we're going to get an equal sign from the logic sign, from the logic box. If your new value, and that just means if you push the switch, and I'll show you what that looks like. This is the switch. That's a new value. And that's the original value. So if your new value is true, which means if you've touched the switch, we are going to set the text from the anonymous label to be anonymous, anonymous, um, else, now if you don't touch that label, or if you don't touch that switch, we are going to set the text to be blank. So what does this do? Um, just going to show you real quick. If we click the switch, notice how it says anonymous under it. And if you click that and you click send to Slack, um, you will see that the word anonymous appears at the very end. So this is, again, just very specific formatting for Slack. That is the entire app. So you just created a random lunch poll generator that can be shared with your coworkers or your friends who are on Slack. That is how you create this app. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. We look forward to seeing what you build. And as always, thanks for thunking.